What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 190 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today, for the first time in the club's 23 year history, we're here. It's the Club World Cup Final. It doesn't get bigger than this. I know that to a lot of people, I think, I don't know if this is just kind of an English thing, but the Club World Cup is seen as like not really a bigger deal. You know, it's kind of that thing that you just have to go to if you win the Champions League. But for me, I feel like that is the official stamp that your team gets to say you are the best club in the world. And we want to do that. We want to have that stamp. I want it for Gibraltar and for Gibraltar Apex. So this is going to be big for us. Uh, the team that we're actually taking on in it is going to be Tigres, who are the Mexican side, of course. We are actually playing in Morocco, which is where the Club World Cup is this year. And we actually took on a Moroccan side in the semi-final. That team being a team I've never heard of before called Matetutan. I, I don't know. Matetutan. Tetuan? Answers on a postcard. Either way, we beat them 7-0. So I'm kind of glad I didn't live come that game. But today, we have the final. The final. A neutral venue. We're going to be playing it at the Stade du Prince Moray uh, Abdallah Stadium. Lovely kind of rolling off the tongue name there. Holds 60,000 fans. So a pretty big ground. And Tigres, of course, a very well-known side if you are familiar with your Mexican football at all. Uh, quite a successful team. Gignac currently plays them, obviously, the former Frenchman. And, um, yeah, they are a fairly high-profile team. Looking at their team, their key player here is Navarro, who looks pretty good, the 24-year-old. An Argentine international. They've also got Rildo, this Mexican, who can play out on the left-hand side. So... They've got a good little team. You know, I've had a flick through their team. They've got players that we're going to have to be wary of. They're definitely not kind of going to be pushovers. They've got, you know, real talent in their side. But I'm very hopeful that today we can get a good performance. Anyway, in terms of the team for today's game, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a sentimental approach, which I know that some people aren't going to be a fan of. Uh, but I'm doing it because it's a big game in the club's history, and I want some of the players who have been here a while to be part of that. And they are, of course, Joe Bouchard and Paul Smith. Paul Smith... His legs have basically dropped off at this point, unfortunately. He has not a lot left in the tank, really, the 34-year-old. His acceleration, I think it was once at kind of 20, once upon a time. It was certainly reasonable. Actually, it was never actually that high. 16.2 it was at one point. It now sits at a measly 10.4, the lowest it's ever been in his career as a professional footballer. We also have Bouchard, who is a little bit in a similar boat, I guess, in a lot of ways. To be fair to Bouchard... He's still improving as kind of a deep line playmaker. Unfortunately, his physicals are that of a slug. They're not that great. So hopefully, uh, despite that, the rest of our team can kind of carry the team. In terms of the squad, we've got Mosca on the bench. We've got Dews, Junior, um, obviously Loal, Volsky, Kabasele, Asad, Mustafa, Gaiganov, and Burkhardt. Of course, pretty much the standard back five. Burkhardt, he didn't give a great game last time we were in a final, if you count the kind of... Um, what do you call it? The the what is it? What's it called? The competition with the Europa League winners and the uh, Champions League winners, the Super Cup. He he wasn't that great in that game against Tottenham. So I'm hoping that today the German can really step up for us. But no, looking at the team as a whole, very very happy with it. Um, we are missing Girard for a injury actually, which is worth noting. He's out with a back strain for between nine days and two weeks. This game for me, it's. It's not the be-all or end-all, but to get that official stamp, as I said, to be known as the best team in the world, you know, it is the the hardest trophy, arguably, to win in Football Manager, simply because you have to have won the Champions League to get here. Um, so we'll see how we get on, you know, taking on Tigres. We've had a look through their squad. They're not a bad side by any means, you know. They, they'd be right up there in the Gibraltar Primera Division if they were in our league, and they'd certainly, I'd expect, with the players that I've seen that they have, get to the Champions League... Um, kind of knockout stages fairly comfortably. So this is going to be tricky. It's just, of course, a one-off tie. We are playing in our away kit. As I said, we're in Morocco, so it's not actually that far away from us, really, in Gibraltar in reality. And I'm hoping that, well, we can just give a good performance. Junior down the right whips it in. It's almost an own goal. Dues was waiting there. Unfortunately, didn't fall his way. But we are applying some pressure here. Volsky wins it. A Bouchard or a Paul Smith goal, and I'm running on the pitch and celebrating with them, by the way, just so we're clear on that. Smith! He had a chance. It's a clear cut opportunity. Two minutes in, and Paul Smith has squandered it. Can he get the ball back in? No, he can't. Oh, to be fair, he kept it in, which is more than what I was expecting with his current pace. Um, but no, early signs, fairly promising for us. That said, Perez here on the attack for Tigres puts it wide. That was a really good opportunity for them to get their noses and head and, ahead. And now we have a chance. Volsky hammers it home. Top left corner. Wow, he hit that with some real venom. It's 1-0, six minutes gone. We've already had a ton of chances in this game. 
but we do strike first in this. The ball whipped in, as you can see, by Junior there. I think whoever it was at the near post didn't really get anything on it. It falls to Volsky, and he just picks it out first time, smashes it in, player on the post. Nowhere to be seen, couldn't react. And, uh, well, 1-0 up here. Tigres not looking too menacing at the moment, but... We, we have started well, but I think there's room for improvement here. 20 minutes gone, and actually we're on the attack again. Cabasele to Volsky, the goal scorer. To Cabasele, whips it in. Deuce is there. Probably should have scored a clear-cut opportunity falling our way. Missed it, though, from less than probably six yards out. We are still on the attack, though. Junior, men forward. Cabasele, can he get it? And he can. Deuce, not quite there. Cabasele... Still can't get it into the box. This is probably going to be a nothing highlight. But we are still on the attack. Bouchard hits it over. For a second, I thought he was going to score a worldie. For a second, it looked almost possible. Well, 1-0 up, though. Tigres, they had that early chance, which they put wide. That's been their only shot of the game. That said, they are on the counter-attack here, and it's Perez going through. Can he finish it this time? He can. And, well, it's a classic counter-attack, you'd have to say, by Tigres. We had kind of a warning that they might try this. With their first chance. I don't know who that is. Is that Geigen off there? No, it's a sad. Gets left for dead by Perez and his pace. And, well, the finish was not too bad either. To be fair, the keeper left high and dry. The 1v1. Always tricky for a goalkeeper in that kind of situation. But, um, unfortunately, couldn't get a hand to it to kind of stop it. And while going into half-time here, unless this could be a very late goal in this first half, it's going to be 1-1, which is not really what we want, is it? Let's tell the players it, how it is. I'm far from pleased. Dues has not had a good game. Let's bring on Mosca. Get on some fresh legs in the striker position. See what Mosca can do on his lonesome. And, uh, well, he's immediately on the ball. Straight from kickoff. This is always a pointless highlight, except today, maybe. No. No, it's still pointless. It's still pointless. Unless Guy Goff can whip it in. Mosca shoots. It was blocked, to be fair. I mean, is this still pointless? We're on the attack again. Geiglov whips it. Mosca hits the woodwork this time. It wasn't pointless at all, but it isn't going to make a difference on the scoreline. A load of chances falling our way. Mosca immediately kind of getting actively involved in the play there. Ten minutes gone in the second half, though. We're continuing to have a lot of shots and pepper their goal, but, well, we still have yet to get anything to show for it, really, despite all of that. We're on the attack here, though. Junior, can he whip it? And he can't, but he's fouled. And, uh, well, we have a penalty, and we all know who's going to be taking it. It's going to be Mosca, the Brazilian. He's come on off the bench just 15 minutes ago. He's had time to get into the game a little bit. And, uh, well, now he's going to have a golden opportunity from the penalty spot to make it 2-1 here. He steps up the number nine. The weight of a nation on his shoulders. Can he bury it? Mosca hits it straight down the middle. Cool, calm, and collected. It's a good goal for us. It's his 11th goal of the season. It's annoying that it's taken a penalty really for us to rely on uh, to get back into this game but well Mosca fantastic finish just smashes it down the middle uh, keeper committed down to his right and uh, well Mosca wheels away in jubilation the club world cup could be coming our way there's still time though for either team Mosca on the attack again to junior hits it Mosca with the rebound maybe saved again the third shot of the chance finds its way in. Six clear-cut chances we've had now. It felt like there were three just in that highlight alone. Junior with the initial effort. Good save there. Mosk with the rebound. It's a great save. But he just reacts quickest again and gets his second goal of the day. He's going to be looking for a hat-trick having come on as a sub. And, uh, well, the two-goal margin now gives us a little bit of room to breathe. That said, Tigres on the attack here. Perez. Navarro scores. It's 3-2. It's not over yet by any means. Gusto uh, Arias Navarro with the goal. Perez, the goal scorer for the first goal for them. With that initial effort, Burkhardt, good save because that was going in. Wasn't bailed out and unfortunately couldn't react quick enough to the rebound, the keeper. 3-2 here. Tigres, they, they, they're they not pushovers, are they? They really are not. Loal is struggling a little bit for fitness. I'm going to bring in Vincinius for him. Just get some fresh legs. In the midfield, we have eight minutes left. I don't want to say eight minutes left to hold on, but if that's what it takes to get a win here, I'm more than happy to do that. Vincinius to Mosca for his hat trick. It was a real opportunity. Vincinius, of course, the sub coming on, having a real immediate impact. Unfortunately, though, the finish was lacking from Mosca, who, well, up until this point, had had pretty much a flawless performance. We are on the attack again, though, but whipped in Basso clears it. Six minutes left. Junior from the corner. Back post cleared away, but only as far as Mosca again. Back out wide with Junior now to Vincinius, the sub. Don't know where he's going. I don't think he does either. <laughs> Guy gone. Vincinius. 
Volsky. Cavasele down the line to Paul Smith. He's not got the pace to get there. No chance for Paul Smith. Paul Smith 10 years ago, no problem with that. Unfortunately, today he has got a problem. But he hasn't got a problem now because we've won. That was a very abrupt end to the game. But 3 2 it finishes. We get a win. We win the Club World Cup. Not many teams have won this trophy. Our name gets added to an illustrious list. And uh, yeah, 3 2 it finished. You can see that uh, Universidad uh, de Chile finished third in the competition. Tigres there getting runners-up, of course. They gave us a run for our money. We celebrate a famous treble. Fans are very, very happy. We get given £3.3 .3 million. The fans celebrate that game. It was a, a good game. We get another win. And as I said, our name gets added to this list alongside the likes of Real Madrid, PSG, Dortmund, Leverkusen, Cruzeiro... There's some pretty big teams on this list, really, isn't there, to be alongside. And, well, we've done it here. It was a great performance, uh, but you really can't fault our team kind of as a whole. It was a, a really, really good performance all in all. And uh, we win the Club World Cup in episode 190, no less. So it didn't take that long, only 23 years. Um, Dew's got top goal scorer. Cavacelle got top assists. And we do end up as champions there of the Club World Cup, which is absolutely amazing. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. Just a shorter one. Wanted to do this final. It is a monumentous occasion. Uh, to be fair to Tigres, they gave us a really, really tough game. They were very, very impressive, the Mexican side. And uh, they kept fighting till the end, so you really can't fault them for that. But anyway, that is all from me. Next time, we'll, we will be back for the Champions League first knockout round, which has been drawn. It's going to be against Bayer Leverkusen. Hopefully, I'll see you guys for that one. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, as always. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Jerking.